Mm-mm-mm. Let me talk about these shows because we missed the the uh, raw report yesterday, which now is so far away I've forgotten about it. But luckily. Anyway, so Raw opened up with Kevin Owens coming out, and he cuts his promo on Steve Austin, dropped a hey yo in there, and uh, promised to beat up uh, Steve Austin at WrestleMania, and then gave a stunner to a cameraman who took a great bump. Great bump. Too bad this guy wasn't in shape, because he had hired him. Then we had uh, Damian Priest versus Finn Balor. This was a non-title match, and they went seven minutes and then uh, uh, Finn Balor hit him with the reckoning after Balor was distracted by Austin Theory. Who, by the way, they're not even on the same show nor feuding with each other, but we needed some sort of interference here. So uh, then Austin Theory gave Balor his finish, and uh, presumably, I mean, I shouldn't say anything, so I just won't. But anyway, he laid the guy out. We had uh, Kevin Patrick talking to Seth Rollins, talking about how you have no path to WrestleMania. And the fans in the background began loudly chanting for Cody, which they did not silence. They let it play. We had the long-awaited Medal of the Giants, Omos, and Commander Aziz. And uh, some people think I just hate Raw and I'm unfair. I'm a fair man. This match was so much better than it had any right to be. I was expecting this to be the bottom of the barrel, absolute trash, and it was totally fine. It was only two minutes, and they didn't do anything. But it was so much better than I expected. Omos pinned him with a tree slam, and then choke slammed Apollo Cruz afterwards. It was fine two minutes of television. Then we had the ongoing storyline where Rollins is going up to Owens, and he comes up with this idea to get on WrestleMania. I'm going to do my own talk show. And in fact, I'm going to interview Steve Austin. And Kevin Owens is like, what are you talking about, bro? That's my idea. You're trying to steal my spot. And so, uh, long story short, uh, they do a segment later, and uh, Sonya Deville puts the match together for the main event. Liv Morgan beat Queen Zelina when uh, Carmella just is flirting, and she... Actually, no, first she was uh, getting chased, and she jumped into Corey Graves' lap, and then Corey and Carmella are kicking it, Rhea Ripley... And, of course, uh, Zelina's uh, distracted and pinned by Liv Morgan in three minutes. And uh, that, uh, man, I can't wait to see this match. We have two nothing-happening tag champs that now can't even get along and work together. Anyway, whatever. So it's going to be a multi-team match at the uh, at WrestleMania, which, for all I know, Zelina and Liv, or Zelina and uh, uh, Carmella are just going to win. But, honestly, it should be Rhea Ripley and uh, and Liv Morgan. Yes, but Brian, uh, what about, uh, you know, Sasha Banks? She's a huge star. She's teaming with Naomi. Uh, they're going to go for the titles at WrestleMania. They are. And they should be screwed by Bailey coming back. Ooh. That's my booking. And we had a Seth Rollins segment, which is noted, set up the match for the main event. Ray and Dominic defeated Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander. At least they actually beat the Hurt Business this week. It was Dominic pinning Cedric with the frog splash. And then they were attacked and beat down by the Miz and Logan Paul. But these damn heel Mysterios, they send Miz outside and they're going to double team Logan Paul, these two baby faces. But he manages to escape just in time. Sets up the uh, WrestleMania match. We had an Edge segment. Bro, this guy was so much better as a babyface. Dude. You'll never guess what he said in his heel promo. Should I do a prediction segment? What did Edge say in his heel promo if you didn't watch Raw? Well, if your answer is... It's the fans! It's all your fault, fans! Yes, He blamed the fans and cut a promo saying you would beat AJ at WrestleMania. If I never heard a guy blame the fans again, if I never heard it again, it would be too soon. Proper usage of that phrase. Bianca Belair beat Dewdrop. The match was good. Bro, they always have good matches. I really like the matches. This is the third time I've seen this match in five weeks. Bro, hire some women. Bring up uh, uh, daddy's girl. Something. 
Don't push it yet. God, the same matches over and over again. Even ones I like. I can only watch the same match so many times before I don't care anymore. Guys, no, nothing. I'm not even going to use the term. Then, RK Bro had their championship celebration. This was when the show totally turned around. This was awesome. So they're out there, and they're celebrating, and Randy Orton's arranged this celebration. But it's Randy Orton. He had to put any thought into this. He's got a couple of balloons that are deflated, a couple of a little bit of popcorn. But, man, Matt Riddle's the biggest fan of Randy Orton, so he's never been so happy. It's the greatest day of his life that Randy, they should put Randy and Daddy's girl together. That's a team for you. But he's so happy that Randy is, has thrown this party for him, and the Street Profits show up, and they won a championship match. They actually, of all things, they go, we beat you in a non-title match a few weeks ago. We deserve a championship match. Randy's like, bro, you ain't get a championship match. We had to win a spelling bee to get a shot at these titles. You ain't just getting a shot for winning a match. Ridiculous. Silly. And then Riddle's like, well, bro, we have to have a match. Like, we're all excited to go to WrestleMania. We don't have an opponent. So I think that we should give them a championship match. And so finally... Orton's like, fine, we'll give you a shot at WrestleMania. And then, as they're leaving, Montez Ford has the audacity to say that this party is ass. <laughs> it's a two-pack of ass. Look at that. That's what he said. <laughs> and now now Riddle's furious. And listen, I'm not doing this segment justice. It was it was 10,000 times better than I'm explaining it. So, so Riddle, now he wants a fight. So it's Riddle versus Montez Ford, and they go nine minutes, and uh, just a lame DQ when Alpha Academy runs in, beats everybody up. So it looks like we're going to have... You know how many... For some reason, Seth Rollins can't get a match at Mania. But, like, everybody else can get a match at WrestleMania. There's 50,000 people doing multi-person matches on this show. We had a Scott Hall video package, which was great. And then, as noted, the main event was Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins. They had a very good match. It went 16 minutes. Uh, Seth had the win, but no ref. And then uh, finally, uh, Kevin Owens boots him, hits him with a stunner, pins him. Seth Rollins, still no path to WrestleMania. You guys honestly watched this show and thought Cody ain't coming in? Really? What are you, new? Mm-mm-mm. God. Then we had NXT. We're also... There are people without a path. Yeah, Cameron to Grimes has no weekend. path to WrestleMania. Maybe Cody's going to NXT. I hadn't thought of that. We had a Scott Hall tribute. Then we had oh uh, the Cody, the Cody NXT post show pizza party. I'm sure it would be epic. Oh, bro, that'd be awesome. I'd, I'd I'd do that. So Miz TV with Dolph Ziggler and bro. When I heard we we're gonna have Miz TV on NXT, I was like. God, I know you want people from the main roster, but I got to watch this stupid thing on two shows. Thankfully, it was short and quick. They went out there. They had a quick segment. It was interrupted by L.A. Knight. L.A. Knight wants a shot at the title. Ziggler said, all right, it's, it's on for the main event here tonight. So that was fine. Then we had a show-long storyline with Cora Jade. Remember how the story was that she was a loser, then she was a geek, and then she was also weak? Remember that? Uh-huh, yes. Now she's a thief. She well, is she has stolen the NXT women's title and the NXT women's tag team titles. Theft. She stole them. And she's she's smirking about it. Well, Brian, do you remember the deal she did with Raquel where they did the whole like they were like flying from tree to tree and all that stuff? Maybe she's just like one of those adrenaline junkies who needs to like, you know, commit like petty crimes to like get off or something. We well, don't know what the development she, of this character could she be. She has stolen these belts. She's a thief. And the whole show, the whole show, Toxic Attraction wants to find their belts, okay? So the heels have been wronged. They have been robbed, and they're going to try and find their belts. So, you know, one of them, uh, one of the, you know, I forget their name, JC, like she, you know, she sees one of the belts, and I swear to God, she sees the belt hanging from something, and she sneaks up and she goes, Oh! Oh, it didn't jump at me. I'm going to try and grab it. And she grabs it, and then, a, you know, the Rancor's door slams or whatever. And now she's <laughs> trapped. And then uh, the other one. Bro, the best part about it, too, though, is. Hold she's on, you're ruining my flow. Game. 
but she's blocked behind the gate, but there's a cameraman suddenly behind her. Yeah. Filming from behind her. So then uh, the other one finds it in a dumpster, but like the dumpster closes on her and then a forklift <laughs> comes down. So they're both trapped. Okay. Wiley kind then, of style. Then not only not only is Cora Jade stolen these championship belts, but she goes to steal Mandy Rose's Escalade. She's gonna steal her car. Well, she gets in the car and she looks in the rear view and Mandy's in the car. Of course she is. And she starts beating up Cora and we're supposed to like feel sorry for this thief who tried to steal an Escalade. And then Mandy just beats the absolute living hell out of her and leaves her for dead. Like, uh, you know, some some horrible, it just she's dead on the concrete. And then somehow the other two have escaped and then they're all there so they can pose. Yeah. Wait, and what did she spray paint on her back? I thought it was going to be like a yellow streak. It was just no, like she, she but just some put, logo. She just put paint on her. Oh, my God. This was beyond. There was no Emmy getting one for this. I'll tell you that much. I see. A, how, what, what, how did you feel about the thespianism or whatnot? There was no <laughs> thespianism in this whatsoever. That is a that is a profound disrespect to thespians everywhere. Now, uh, even let me continue. Theater. We had Santos Escobar beating Cameron Grimes. This was actually a really good match. Of course and it was. Santos beat him clean in the middle. Pinned him. A lot of heel clean wins on this show. Just pinned him clean in the middle of the ring. So Escobar's in the ladder match. And uh, Cameron Grimes has no path to WrestleMania. They found a kid. And he beat Kushida. And so this kid now is going to face, I think, Trick Williams next week. And the winner gets into the ladder match. Match was good, but, bro, I've said it a million times. These guys could have a match in every other promotion on the face of this planet. Including up in New Brunswick on a very short day. Oh, for heaven's sake. And it would sakes. be better than this match. Gets the Grayson Waller winner, by the way. Then we had a segment. I was so excited. I almost peed straight up in the air, <laughs> quite frankly. They almost set up Santos Escobar and Rey Mysterio. Oh, man. Instead, it's Dominic Mysterio against Raul Mendoza. No disrespect to either of them, but oh, bro. bro. I want to see Rey Mysterio and Santos Escobar. Me too. We had Tiffany Stratton versus Sarai, which was the biggest load of trash I ever saw. So Sarai's gimmick is she wears a schoolgirl outfit backstage, but she goes through the magic smoke in her entrance wearing her medallion, and she transforms into a worker. Well, Tiffany attacks her backstage and tears off the medallion. So now, and this was her exact words, she's unable to do her transformation. Yes, she beat her ass through the entrance. She rolled her out there. And apparently if you get rolled out there by somebody else, you don't transform. So she's thrown out there. She gets beaten up. And uh, Tiffany Stratton does a spinning Vader splash right to the legs of Sarai. I I think she broke both her legs. It's payback for Sarai some of those kicks. (laughs) We had a Ciampa promo thanking the fans. It looks like he's on his way out after standing in the liver. His last match will be against Tony D'Angelo, it appears. Indy Hartwell, Persia Parada. I mean, it wasn't that bad, but if you've ever seen a match that was practiced 300 times and they just went out and did what they practiced and there was like no emotion or nothing, this was it. We had the return to the creep from the creep farm. A lot of making out afterwards. Damn it, there's the music. Thought I'd do it, but I didn't. Last two matches after the break, Observer Live. I couldn't get it all in before the break. But anyway, Dominic Mysterio beat Raul Men- uh, Mendoza, which is actually a good match. It was. Yeah, Dominic Mysterio's better than people give him credit for because he's on Raw and all that. But Dude, uh, Mendoza's so good. Well, they, those two guys don't get any credit. Then we had uh, the end of the Cora Jade thing. <laughs> And uh, we had a segment with the Creed Brothers, MSK, and Imperium. Dude, I don't like to bury the fans, but I hate these nerds that just have to boo MSK. And they ruin all the segments. And it's like a small pocket of fans that got mad at them. And it's on national television in this little building. And it's like, whatever. Whatever. And then we had Dolph Ziggler versus LA Knight, which uh, is a good match. It's Dolph Ziggler and LA Knight. And uh, they worked well together. And then same thing. Uh, There was actually interference, but it didn't lead to the finish at all. It was like 10 minutes before the finish. And then finally, uh, L.A. Knight just goes for a charge, misses, gets super kicked, pinned clean in the middle of the ring. Now we got to give Ziggler a little credibility after he won the title. Of course. 
And then Braun Breaker hits the ring, and he's he's not smiling raw, Braun Breaker, today. He's, uh, he's Scott Steiner. Not Rick. He's Scott. And he <laughs> wants a match at uh, Stand and Deliver, and Ziggler holds up the belt, accepts. So, uh, you know, there was good stuff on this show. But I can't help but notice that every time there's something good, it involves professional wrestlers who have been doing professional wrestling for a long time. How about that? And all of their volleyball and fitness and just sucks. But oh well. We just got to keep trying, right? We just got to keep doing those NILs. Let's keep doing those tryouts with no wrestlers allowed. We can only make this thing worse. Favorite quote from The Simpsons? Can you do an impression? Sure. Okay, so uh, Bart was doing some road cleanup, and he said, Hey, Krusty, what are you doing here? And Krusty says, "Uh, It's all part of my glug, glug, vroom, vroom, thunk, thunk. That was a very good impression, Craig. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's all part of my glug, glug, vroom, vroom, thunk, thunk. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.